that are referring to your freedom, your nirvana, Shatakam 6. And the whole beauty of relating to Shiva is to discover that you are indeed Shiva. See, if you feel close to your family members, is there a time that you say, I don't want to be so close? Only when you feel a little hurt, you will say like this, I don't want any expectations. But when you are relating to a being that is fully accepting and embracing of you, in fact, the greatest teaching of Shiva is that he is you, then why should we not know it? Because we want more and more closeness with Bhagwan. Why do we want more closeness? Why do we want to know that everything is okay? Because we want to find ourselves completely acceptable as people. We don't want to have insecurity. We don't want to feel that nobody cares for us. We're waiting. And here, in relating to Shiva, what we discover is that we are actually love. The nature of Shiva is all-inclusiveness, is love, and that's what Adi Shankaracharya has composed these very beautiful set of six verses. I probably will not dwell too much on it. I will just touch it and move. Okay? But it's so beautiful that it seemed appropriate to share this with all of us today. Because how close can we get to Shiva? As close as possible. You're sitting on his lap. No, no, even closer. Well, actually, maybe Shiva is in your heart. Maybe you are Shiva. Okay, so we want to discover that possibility. The tune is very beautiful. Uh, and uh, we have uh, Sonali who will uh, sing one shloka. And then I will just quickly explain and we'll move on. Yeah. Because she's saying, man, Manaha, Naham, I am not the mind. Hey, then how, how are you able to see? So, of course, I have the mind, but that Na is, stands for something that is opposed to. So, if I say I'm not a donkey, I mean, I think you all will agree with that. Okay. <laughs> so, I'm not a donkey doesn't mean that the donkey is absent. I may be donkey-like, but I am other than a donkey, okay? So here, the, these uh, verses, these shlokas are such that there is a declaration of what I am not. 
and every shloka ends with shivo ham aham shivaha and this is a statement that is not born of arrogance it is not because shiva prasad is your name it is because you discover that you are a conscious being so i want to spend a little time this might be a little technical but i think it's worth doing it so what we understand as consciousness and what we understand as matter okay matter hmm? so matter is something that you can see and consciousness is something you cannot see so there is drishyatva then matter is made of five elements including your body mind but consciousness a conscious being that you are is not made of five elements then sagunatva so that matter has qualities but you don't have qualities as in you presence you consciousness has no qualities savikaratva you can become fat or thin or slim or whatever else but consciousness can't be and matter can come and go but you cannot come and go you as in consciousness so what we are really saying here is aham shivaha that i am that shiva and i am talking from the standpoint of the consciousness that i am not the personality the personality is there and it has all these different qualities matter etc but i am much more than that and what i am aware of i am different i am aware of the chair am i different or not i am aware of the washing machine am i different i may go and sit inside the washing machine you know there used to be an advertisement with your jeans you go and sit inside the washing machine because you love your jeans so much but you are different from that from your family members of course you feel different if you see an elephant do you become an elephant yes or no you become an elephant anybody no you see a microbe you become a microbe tiny you see an ant you become an ant so what you are aware of you are not you are other than and that's what is being uh, declared here so like that we can go to the breath and the five elements so let's do the second shloka choice about going inside your lungs and coming out no it doesn't have a choice even if you are a marathoner suppose you have very big you know nice lungs you have will prana say you know what i really like it here i'm not getting out prana cannot say that if the prana enters a smoker's lungs You say, my God, I, it's just so too much. I have to get out of here. Will not say that. Why? Because prana is not conscious. Prana is not sentient. It doesn't have a will of its own. And so, although we learn in yoga the benefit of pranayama, 
who is the one that manages the prana we do it and that's what the second shloka is saying that the different types of prana that manifest in our body so there are different functions that are associated that i am much more than the prana because i can do anulom vilom i can do bastrika i can do all that right and the i am much more than the fat and the tissues and the blood so there you know ayurveda looks at the body which has seven things sapta dhatu so i am much more than all of this and of course i am much more than the organs of my action so i do a lot of things with my hands i do a lot of things with my feet and sometimes i feel upset about what i have done or not done but still i am much more than this you know the sikhs is a very beautiful thing they wear that kada and one of the uh, sikh people was telling me the reason they wear that kada on their hand wrist is to remind them that this hand is meant to do acts of dharma so you see the kada it's a reminder that me you don't do wrong things so but still whether you do right things or wrong things or whatever things you do you are much more than all of this okay show that there is lot of conflict in our life is by feeding our raga and dvesha raga means a craving for something i want my husband to be like this only okay and we have very good irade so i am saying for your benefit only we have a lot of rational reason for all this but because my husband or wife is not the way i want that is called raga when i have raga means a craving for something then i cannot be happy because there are very few times that when the raga is fulfilled only the few times that my husband or wife behaves properly most of the times i'm always struggling i want partner to change okay i may want to change the partner also but now many years have passed so very difficult so i try many ways i persuade i pray i cajole i threaten i blackmail all these tricks i try but there is a possibility that if i were to learn to accept the person as he or she is that person will really bloom will blossom because one of the things we all crave for is acceptance we want the other person to give us full freedom to be how we are and so here in this shloka there is a reference to the fact that these raga and dvesha certain cravings i have certain hatred i have i am able to see that i am much more than this why because sometimes i find myself having lot of love and lot of obsession about something 
then there are times that I find that has changed. So the many emotions that I experience, including pride, including jealousy, are they always present? No. Sometimes pride comes, sometimes jealousy comes, sometimes sadness comes, sometimes happiness comes. It keeps changing all the time. And our definition of the reality is that which does not change ever. So that which is limitless, that which is the nature of fullness, Chidanandaha Shivoham Shivoham. I was very happy to see how everyone participated in this puja. The Abhishekam as well as the flowers that were offered. In fact, uh, the Shivalinga was entirely covered. Very beautiful. So lots of punya available to us. To whom is the punya available? It is to the one who thinks, I am a karta, I am a doer, I want lots of punya, tell me what mantra to do, what japa to do, what asana to do, I want, I want, I want. Very good. So the punya that you have got, what are you going to do with it? Aisa kabhi socha hai. So of course we'll say, no, no, I want my family to be fine. So I was at the kum recently. In talking to some of them, they'll say, Hum isliye snan karne aaye hai, kyunki hamara parivar sukhi rahe. And that is the part of all of our prayers. And then, in Kashi, I also went to one Kala Bhairava temple. Okay, some of you all may have gone there, very beautiful. And Shiva is referred to as Papa Bhakshakaha. The one who does not have Indian and Chinese food, but he takes your papa. So papa meaning what? You are suffering. Nobody wants papa. Nobody wants to suffer. And here you can go and offer Shiva whatever papa you have done. You have sense that, oh my God, I did these really terrible things. I'm, I'm so ashamed of it. You seek the grace of Shiva. By seeking the grace of Shiva, because he's like, huh, give me more, give me more. You have done a lot, lot of papa, no problem. But you know what I'm going to do for you? I will remove your ignorance. You think you're a karta. You think you are suffering. You think you have a lot of papa. That's why then you got you. That's why you have these really annoying in-laws. And that's why the political system is the way it is. So, so much papa, my God, when my suffering is going to stop is our question. But Shiva, you know what he says? He says that actually, really speaking, you are free from punya and papa. Which you are we talking about? Not the karta, not the doer. The doer has lot of punya papa. But we shift attention to the conscious being that becomes the doer as though. It's like, suppose you are consciousness, you are limitless, but you have a uniform of being a human being. And the uniform is not kapde ka uniform. It is a, a uniform of tissues, 
fat, blood, bones, skeleton. So as consciousness, you are having a human experience. So what the declaration here is that yes, as Shiva, I will give you a lot of punya, but I stand for the one who really can take away all your ignorance, all the wrong things you think about yourself. And so punya and papa don't really touch you. And all these other pursuits, you know, yes, you can chant your mantra, please go for Tirtha Yatra, do all this and gain a lot of punya, use the punya well. And if you really use your punya well, then you will go all the way to discover that you are free. Because the greatest punya that you can use is to discover that you and Shiva are one. Vegetarians. Okay. Let then let me say Kshatriyas are warriors. Gujaratis are foodies. Safe. Uh, Maharashtrians are huh? Kadus. Kadus. That's said by Maharashtrian. Okay. Um who else I can see? South Indian. Ah, South Indian broad. Okay. The Tamilians are Madrasi. Madrasis are <laughs> hey? smart people. It was said by a Madrasi. Huh? No. Orthodox. Okay. Suppose you are uh, suppose you are a Gujarati. Okay. Uh, and I say uh, what can I say? Kastu <laughs> Shivratri. Suppose I say, Gujaratis are loud people. Wherever they go, they make a lot of sound. Suppose I say this, okay? Now what's going to happen is, the ones who are Gujaratis will walk, up, walk out. <laughs> How can this Swamini talk against Gujaratis? Very bad. But actually what has happened is, because you so identify with being a Gujarati, you cannot tolerate anything bad said against a Gujarati. Which in other words means that you and Gujarat are fused. Okay? Nobody can speak against it. means your identity comes from being Gujarati. Your self-worth comes from being Gujarati. Were you born a Gujarati? No. You were born as a person, you happen to be in a Gujarati family or you were adopted, we don't know. Okay? <laughs> I'm not creating samshaya but still <laughs> possibility. Okay? So, Gujarat is not in your blood. Correct? Blood transfusion, that's why we can do. The identities we have Sometimes make us feel very happy. Sometimes can be a source of a lot of conflict for us. And therefore this shloka which talks about the fact that, uh, that jati bheda, I am not that jati. As, as the conscious awareful being, I am aware of my jati, I am aware of the community. Maybe I am proud of belonging to a community, but I am much more 
than this. Also, only in this lifetime, we are relating to our mother and father and so on. As somebody who has done past life regression, in all likelihood you will find that the one whom you married this lifetime may have been your enemy. Possibility. Okay? So, you have a wonderful, okay, so he is confirming it is a fact. <laughs> oh, why will you fight so much? <laughs> so, the reason you are fighting so much is that there is some hisab baki from previous lifetime. So, these different relationships that we have, Pita, even Guru Shishya, don't think it is one eternal relationship. The Shishya <laughs> the Shishya continues to be a Shishya until the Shishya is understood. When they say, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Correct? You heard that. When the student is really ready, the teacher disappears. Why? Because in the place of that student is a teacher. And any which way, what is common between all the different relationships that we have? What is it that is common? It's pure being, pure presence. So there may be many, many gold ornaments. You know, in Dubai, if you go, it is shocking to see all kinds of things made of gold. Taps and all are nothing. So gold taps and every possible part of your body can be covered with gold ornaments. Okay? But the, the goldsmith is very clear, pakka businessman he is. You may buy things for sentimental reasons, you may not, even if you want to, um, if you are buying a Mangal Sutra or you are selling it, you will want to extract making charges. His focus is never lost, he is a jnani. He is a jnani with respect to gold. He will only give you the price of the gold. So, the pure presence, pure being is our nature and this jati, the different relations that we have, they are just incidental to this lifetime and therefore shivoham, shivoham. which is all pervasive. There is no place that it is not. And right now, you may be sitting here in this hall, but actually, and I'm borrowing a phrase from Swami Brahmavidanaji, you are sitting on every galaxy, every planet. I'm telling you the truth. The body might be sitting here, but the consciousness, the conscious being that you are, is all over. And for this conscious being, is there any bandha? Is there any bondage? Because consciousness is limitless. Is there any mukti for this conscious being? No bandha, no mukti. Why? Because you are limitless, that's why. So with this, we've just got a glimpse of Nirvana Shatakam. Hmm? That's it, six verses. 
we can appreciate the possibility that I am much more than the body, I am much more than the mind, I am much more than my relationships, I am much more than my experiences, I am much more than my emotions, I am much more than all my identities put together. It's a possibility. For it to be a reality, I have to discover it. I don't have to do a lot. But minimum I have to do is to expose myself to someone who happens to know, who happens to be a guru. Temporarily, okay? Like I said, it's not a permanent relationship. But what is the truth of me? The truth of me is that I am so close to Shiva and I have lived a life of seeing that all forms are sacred. All forms have come from Shiva. This form that I have, body, mind, sense complex, I may not be happy with many aspects of my body. Maybe there are lots of aches and pains, maybe I have to lose weight, lots of things that have to be done. But this entire body, mind, sense complex has come from Shiva. Shiva as in Ishwara. So all the forms have come from Shiva. What about the form is Nirvikara? What is it that, that doesn't have a form? Well, that is the truth of me and Shiva. And so, we're not being arrogant when we say Shivoham. The one who has discovered this can truly happily say this. In fact, every moment of happiness that we have, and I'm hoping that there will be many more moments as we proceed, you are one with Shiva. Because in that oneness, there is no separation. So we can uh, maybe say the, you know, Chidananda Rupa. Chidananda Rupa Shivoham 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 Chidananda Rupa Shivoham Shivoham Shivoham, 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 Shivoham. Oh, that's it.